educative video of microsurgical management of very vascular tumor that is hemangioblastoma of cerebellum. This 57 years gentleman presented with worsening headache, neck pain and swaying while walking. Examination showed glossocoma score 15. Fundi showed bilateral fraud papilledema. He had dysarthria and ataxic gait. Subsequently, he was investigated with contrast MRI scan brain. Showed a large left cerebellar brilliantly enhancing mass with a very significant edema and swelling of the left cerebellum and very significant pressure on the cerebellum and brain stem with ventriculomegaly. There was an evidence of extensive vessels which were supplying the tumor from the periphery of the tumor as shown here in the contrast MRI and MRI venogram. Usually these tumors get blood supply from all three vessels that is superior cerebellar, anterior inferior cerebellar artery and posterior inferior cerebellar artery that is spica and they have a very high vascularity and draw the blood from everywhere. So he was taken up for surgery, underwent right paramedian suboccipital craniotomy with inverted U incision and microsurgical total removal of the hemangioblastoma. These are the craniotomy steps. Now, once we open the dura in the cruciate manner, the cerebellum is very tense and non-pulsatile, probably due to the swelling, due to the tumor. Prior, we had put him on dexamethasone injections for three days to reduce the edema before the surgery that is of great help. Now the tumor is situated on the superior aspect and, and the lateral medial aspect of the cerebellum. Now the cerebellar incision is made on the superior aspect as shown here and usually these, the blood supply was coming more from the superior cerebellar artery at the at the region of the from the tentorium at the region of the tentorium so the cerebellar incision is made now i would always like to mention here these tumors especially when hemangioblastomas when you make a diagnosis on mri and angiography we must treat them like artery venous malformations one must keep it in mind we should never dig into the tumor or never start inside the tumor like how we start with the gliomas or meningiomas because these are very vascular tumors and the blood vessels come extensively from all the all the feeders wherever the tumor is situated and it draws the blood supply from the main trunks as well as the new vascular channels and multiple small capillaries also they keep supplying the deeper parts of the tumor. So one needs to always treat them like an AV malformation and the approach also should be like an AV malformation. Now from the periphery of the tumor we need to slowly coagulate from surface to deep and from all the sides of the tumor, the blood vessels entering into the tumor need to be coagulated. And one has to be very careful because not only the major feeders, the capillaries also they keep feeding. This is very important to prevent. We see many a times post-operative intracerebellar hemorrhage after excision. This is the reason because the capillaries and, and the arterioles also are extremely important to take when you take off the tumor. So from superficial to deep, circumferentially, the, we, have, we need to go and keep coagulating the vessels slowly and, and with a lot of patience. And non-stick bipolar is usually recommended to use in such cases. 
now the vessels are coagulated and cut again one must remember these vessels are abnormal vessels and they may take little time to get coagulated and they need to be need to be coagulated for a long time to have complete obliteration so the the surface vessels are cut and gently again sector by sector layer by layer you keep need to keep going deeper and deeper now i want you to see the lot of blood supply coming up from the tentorium you see the major vessels they keep coming superior aspect that is from the tentorium now the vessels are coagulated and cut never go into the deeper before we coagulate the superficial parts so the superficial always every level you need to achieve the hemostasis achieve the stop the bleeders before we proceed otherwise it will cause a mess and we don't know where is the bleeder and where we are and it would it can be a disastrous surgical procedure now from surface we are going all around superficial to deep right to left and and superior to inferior and keep on cutting the blood supply to the tumor this is a very important now there is always a plane of cleavage or the gliosis which separates the tumor from the normal cerebellum and we need to remain in that plane and coagulate the vessels now you see the we are going from superficial to deep and we are going from lateral to medial and superior to inferior these are the superior branches medial branches coming from superior cerebellar artery now you see in spite of coagulation still there is so much of ooze from the periphery so with a lot of patience these small oozes also needs to be coagulated and divided so now you can see the surface of the tumor is now seen very well and superior feeders are taken care of from superior cerebellar artery and anterior inferior cerebellar artery and posterior inferior cerebellar artery that's pica ica and sca now that is the medial part of the tumor medial and inferior part of the tumor usually they get supply from posterior inferior cerebellar artery that is pica branches now tumor is isolated from the surface now we are on the surface of the tumor now you see the surface of the tumor you can see the blood vessels there and you see as you keep coagulating they keep on oozing and keep on bleeding now you see that and one must remember again like an av mal formation the more you coagulate the surface vessels the tumor starts shrinking in size again that's of great help to surgery and surgeons so that the tumor starts reducing in size and you can use you can easily get into the plane of the cleavage of the tumor so patiently the surface vessels of the tumor are kept on coagulating layer by layer and from all around circumferentially superficial to deep this is a very important step in tackling this these tumors and to avoid intra operative hemorrhage and post operative hemorrhage or complications due to the high vascularity now as i mentioned to you earlier maximum and high vascularity is coming from tentorium superior cerebellar artery branches now we are seeing the tentorium cerebelli there and we have reached the posterior or the lateral margin of the tumor taken off all the bleeders you take your own time with high illumination and magnification look at the every vessel and coagulate if you want to have no post operative complication or post operative hemorrhage in such lesions now you can see there is a gliotic border there and you see how the vessels keep coming from the periphery small vessels and they keep oozing and they 
once you cut them or coag they retract into a cerebellar cer cerebellar substance again you need to follow them and coagulate them don't allow the the the, surf, the vessels to retract into cerebellar substance and there they keep on oozing post operatively and lead to diffuse hemorrhage inside the cerebellum this is again a very important step one must remember so that is the plane of cleavage between the part of the hemangioblastoma and the cerebellum now you see how how it keeps bleeding even from the normal cerebellum and these are the small feeders from the normal cerebellum going into the tumor now that's an inferior part of the tumor being supplied by in, in posterior inferior cerebellar artery now you see how it bleeds we are not doing anything just separating and the normal cerebellum keeps oozing there that itself suggests now how much is the vascularity of this tumor now i want you to see it is bleeding from everywhere now after coagulating almost now we are fighting it for about two and a half to three hours now now you see the superior medial aspect of the tentorium attachment to the tentorium is being extracted and coagulated and divided now the whole i want you to see after coagulating all around the tumor has reduced in size very significantly now we are in the inferior aspect of the tumor now you see that the jet of the blood coming from the tentorium and that is the main feeders from the tentorial branch of the superior cerebellar artery and probably posterior cerebral artery also sometimes could be the feeder now you see the whole tumor is separated all around and we we isolated the tumor and completely removed now the most important step would be to achieve the hemostasis all around very patiently and absolute hemostasis needs to be achieved so the non stick bipolar as i mentioned to you earlier go sector by sector layer by layer and start coagulating the small feeders from the surface and from the deeper areas now that is a tentorium cerebelli now you see still there is a lot of bleeding oozing from the tentorium cerebelli one needs to coagulate gently and achieve the hemostasis which may take almost for about half an hour to one hour but it is worth struggling and achieving the hemostasis now you see that's a medial part of the blood supply coming from the the superior cerebellar artery and now we have achieved almost complete hemostasis and wait for another 15 minutes at this juncture we ask the anesthetist to increase the bp by 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury and see for any ooze coming from the tumor bed or the cerebellum because usually what happens after the during the surgery these vessels get retracted and once after the, uh, the, the, the patient is woken from anesthesia due to pain, BP may go up and it may bleed inside the tumor bed or in the cerebellum causing disastrous outcome to the patient. This is extremely important to achieve hemostasis and wait for half an hour with the increase in the blood pressure. Now, absolute hemostasis is achieved dura is left open bone is not replaced scalp is closed because we expected some swelling in the cerebellum now before the surgery since there's a ventricular megaly we tap the ventricles through the parietal burr hole we don't prefer to do a shank now that's the dimensions of the gross specimen and same day evening we get a CT scan brain done, shows complete removal of the hemangioblastoma. There is small edema and swelling and there is no hemorrhage and ventricular size has come back to normal. That is the post-operative clinical status of the patient. He was ventilated for six hours, then subsequently came off the ventilator and sedation. 
and glossocoma score is 15 and his respiration is normal and no other neurological deficits. That is uh, the histopathological report confirming the diagnosis of hemangioblastoma on day 7 and came back for follow up 15 days after the fall after the after the surgery that is 7 days after the discharge wound has healed well his ataxia has subsided completely he is independent and taking orally attending to his all the daily activities and preoperative deficits have completely disappeared this is our neuroanesthesia team and our presence online with more than 440 microsurgical endoscopic navigation guided educative neurosurgical operative procedural videos on youtube channel neurosurgical video atlas thank you very much for viewing